One of the biggest transfer stories of the summer concentrates on the NBA and it's happened in a slightly more understated uh, mode than we may have expected. LeBron James, John, is off to LA. Yes, uh, I think that this is sort of what we were all expecting since last NBA Finals. Not this one that just wrapped up, but from a year ago uh, when I was at the Finals, everybody was talking about LeBron potentially leaving Cleveland this summer to come to Los Angeles. I think there was a pretty good indication that that might happen when he bought a second $20 million mansion in Brentwood. So at that point, a pretty good chance that he was coming to California. You need, you need a Hollywood base, John. Come on, you've got to know this. You need a Hollywood base. It just makes sense. Yeah, you got to have two. Why, why have one mansion when you can have two? He's got a lot of stuff, and he needs a yeah. place to store that stuff, and that stuff can be a mansion in Brentwood, and that's okay. And we're not ones to judge. As I mentioned, it's the understated nature of this that I suppose caught a lot of people off guard, because... You say a lot of people may have been expecting this news to happen. I mean, even thinking, like, the idea of LeBron playing for the Lakers just seems like this absolute marriage made in heaven that a lot of people possibly would have seen many, many years out. But here we are. He's not gone for uh, an ESPN special. He's not gone for a sit-down at Sports Illustrated. It's like the briefest statement possible put out to announce that he's going to the Lakers, which seems just at odds with the whole situation. Yeah, it's a little strange. I think maybe some of it is informed by previous, uh, you know, capital D decisions and then lowercase d decisions where he had that TV special that you mentioned and then mm -hmm. he did one with SI. And I think at this point he goes, he's bigger a lot of the times uh, than the news cycle. It doesn't really matter how he puts out the information because it's going to become such a massive story. And with this one, they put out that uh, weird press release and then immediately everybody was scrambling to talk about LeBron and what it meant. Uh, I think it's interesting, though, that he decided to come to the Lakers without really any serious stars willing to join him or without any clear path to one. Uh, obviously, Paul George decided to stay in Oklahoma City. Uh, and then beyond that, they're going to try to get Kawhi Leonard, but you don't know about that. So maybe he does have, you know, he signed a four-year contract with an option in the fourth year. Maybe he does have a long-term plan for this one. I was listening to your podcast uh, over on The Ringer uh, yesterday, and you were talking about when... Thank he, you, by the way. You're, we're welcome. He, when, <laughs> we appreciate it. When he went back to, uh, to Cleveland, he spoke about trying to, I suppose, foster uh, a winning mentality, a culture of winning, um, winning multiple NBA championships. Obviously, that hasn't necessarily come to pass. We're victorious, obviously, enough uh, at one stage, but the line of succession just isn't there he's decided ultimately and I think the NBA Finals kind of bears decision out that you know maybe he's right to possibly move on at this stage but he's moving to a Lakers side like Lakers is spelled in capital letters for everybody but in terms of form like this is a side that haven't reached the playoffs in five years this not necessarily a basket case but they've and they have I'm not going to say an LA Lakers side has fallen on hard times but by comparison to the sides that have gone before I mean they don't even pale in comparison they're very very poor yeah, and uh, one, what they already had in place was poor, and two, what they brought in was, if not poor, then curious. Uh, yes, they signed JaVale McGee and Rajon Rondo and Lance Stevenson, and they brought back uh, KCP all on one-year deals. And the one-year deal component is interesting because they can get away from that money and reallocate it next year potentially to bigger stars, bigger names. But in the interim, as you mentioned, it is LeBron, and he has gone to seven straight finals, and I wonder what it's going to look like if he can't get out of the Western Conference next season and he doesn't make it to the finals, and if he feels like at age 33-34 slash next year that he may be wasted a year, because you're absolutely right. It's not a great team. They've got a lot of bit parts, and then you look at what the Warriors just did when they added Boogie Cousins coming off an Achilles. He can rest all year and then be ready for the playoffs so they get even stronger. It's it's a right now it's a it's a weird match. It makes sense from a storyline perspective, from a narrative perspective, but from a team building perspective, they have a lot to do still. Um, talk us through that Lakers roster as it is, because as you mentioned, there are a couple of names uh, that's that's that Lonzo Ball is one that kind of sticks out at us. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, household names don't necessarily trip off the tongue the way they would do with the Warriors at the moment. So they lost Julius Randle. He signed with the Pelicans. Uh, that was a name that they were debating on whether or not they were going to bring back in restricted free agency. They announced his rights and he left. It's probably a better situation for him to leave. As you mentioned, Lonzo Ball, I think in a vacuum, part of Lonzo Ball could work with LeBron. I mean, they, we've seen in the past that surrounding LeBron with shooters is best. That is not what the Lakers are doing right mm -hmm. now. And Lonzo Ball is not a great shooter. However, he isn't 
a ball dominant point guard. He does keep the ball moving. He does play relatively good defense, so he might be able to work. But if you were going to try to bring in another superstar, he'd be a guy that you might dangle uh, to another team in a trade. The big guy, really, to pair with LeBron will be Brandon Ingram, and we'll see what kind of progress he can make. He made some last year when Lonzo Ball was out. Uh, he's a really good player. He still needs to pack on some weight. Uh, but it'll it'll depend on do they use him as well as bait to attract another free agent or another uh, a trade partner perhaps. He's suddenly become a massive lightning rod for for uh, the team now because where before they were basically for the last couple of years basically possibly trading on name recognition alone and their reputation etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And now they can go hey listen we've got LeBron James here come yeah. sign for us. Yeah yeah I mean it's a it's a natural fit and I think that's. While I don't like at all the the places the pieces that they put in place in the last couple of days around him, even though they are in one year contracts, mm. uh, at least next year you can get rid of all that money and do exactly what you just said. Yeah. It's Los Angeles, it's the Lakers, and now also it's LeBron. And that who wouldn't want to go and play there? Absolutely. It takes back to the genesis of this deal. By the way, I'll just mention that England have a penalty. Carlos Sanchez has wrestled Harry Kane to the box. The physical nature of the Colombian defense. Thank you, Pete. Has uh, come to the fore once more. The Colombian defenders are protesting surrounding the referee tonight. Radamel Falcao, uh, chief amongst them. Sanchez has picked up a yellow card for his troubles. Uh, possibly lucky that it's nothing more. But England will have a penalty here with uh, nearly nine minutes, ten minutes played in the second half. We'll keep you posted on that one. Um, John, take us back to the genesis of this deal. I know you were talking about he's possibly making googly eyes at, at LA and, and possibly vice versa. Uh, over the course of the last 18 months in particular. Do we know when first contact was made? Do we know what level of involvement Magic Johnson had in getting this deal, not even over the line, but started? When did the conversations, do we know when did they kick off? It felt like it was not this past season, but the season before and the run-up to the playoffs where really everybody around the league started talking about what would LeBron do uh, this offseason as he headed into his option year. Would he renounce that option? Would he become a free agent? And if he did, uh, everybody was talking about Los Angeles as that landing spot. And it has a lot to do with, one, as you mentioned, it's the Lakers. Two, the city is a big draw. Basically, the entire NBA spends the summer here uh, in Los Angeles. So uh, for LeBron to be able to spend his entire year there, that's interesting. He's mentioned a lot about his family. He's got a, a kid, Bronny, who's a pretty good basketball player. The basketball here in Los Angeles is obviously much better on the prep level than it is in Cleveland. How old is the and kid? Then beyond He's uh, early teens, I think. Oh, Christ. We're, we're going to have another James in the league by you know the next five, ten years, possibly, if he's that good. They could be playing together. It's possible. <laughs> the, longevity, it's possible. the longevity thing is one thing that's come up about LeBron, though, because the, yeah. we're, 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 what, 33 now? We're kind of figuring that he might yeah. be able to keep still going. Who knows? It's happened. Players have kept going into their early 40s. He's, well, I mean, especially for him, even though he has all those miles on him and he's played, you know, he led the league in minutes last year. He didn't miss a game. He led the playoffs in minutes. And yet, when you watch his pregame routine, I, I covered the Cavaliers quite a bit last year, and you watch him, and during pregame warmups, pretty much every NBA player, especially during the regular season as the season drones on, just sort of goes through the motions. But he's a monster beforehand. He's doing, like, all these crazy cardio workouts, and he's got a medicine ball and the whole bit. So, yeah, if he, if he lasted long enough to play with his kid, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, that, in terms of how he fits in, uh, no one mentioned Magic was kind of, um, I suppose, central to getting this deal over the line. Uh, were there any more incentives, I guess, that the Lakers threw his way to try and get him on board for this season? I think it's baked into Los Angeles, Hollywood, the Lakers. I mean, he has uh, a budding media enterprise called Uninterrupted that is a podcast and video arm that he spun off with Rich Paul, his agent in Clutch Sports. So they've got a bunch of athletes right now that are under contract doing podcasts and video for them, and he wants to make that into a bigger deal. There's also talk of Space Jam 2 which would obviously be here in Hollywood. You're talking my language, in. John. You're talking my language. <laughs> Space Jam 2. You and me both. I can't wait. So I think that there's a lot of opportunities like that for LeBron. Uh, England, by the way, have just taken the lead against Colombia. 57 minutes played at the Spartak Stadium in Moscow. Harry Kane with a penalty after he was tackled to the ground by Carlos Sanchez. Kane, after an interminable wait, stepped up with the penalty, right-footed, and he sent it down the middle, sending David Espina flying to his right, and England lead their last 16 tie in Moscow. Exciting, exciting times for England. It is the media thing. 
the worry for people, I know you said, say that a lot of NBA players, John, spend a lot of their time in LA during the course of the summer anyway. Is there a fear that all of that might become a distraction where necessarily it mightn't have been for a man who was the other part of the year based on the other far side of the country? No, I think in a weird way, it it's almost the opposite because in Cleveland, yeah, it's a smaller market and it's quieter and you don't have quite as much uh, crush of media attention, mm. but he's LeBron, so he is... He's the biggest thing going anywhere he goes, and especially in Cleveland, where it's a very small city, uh, and and LeBron is the biggest thing going, and he can't really go out and and you know be a normal human being. Here in Los Angeles, there are stars everywhere. I mean, his kid is going to go off to a a really good prep school about thirty minutes north of Los Angeles and play basketball, and he'll be among other kids who have famous parents, as opposed to being the main kid. So mm-hmm. I think for both uh, LeBron and his family, he just sort of you know, integrates with a bunch of other super famous people here in Los Angeles and he can go about his business. He's in uh, the right kind of space for uh, his star power. Uh, You mentioned Kawhi Leonard uh, earlier on. He seems to be the other jigsaw piece that may, in fact, make things click, not only for uh, LeBron, but for the Lakers as a whole, should he come on board. He wants to come on board. I will uh, preface this by saying, as a Philadelphian, I would prefer he come on board with the Philadelphia 76ers. It would be nice to see some balance to the league. Because right now, the Western Conference has the predominant number of uh, all-stars that are active, the predominant number of all-NBA players that are active. Obviously, the teams, the best teams in the league are all in the Western Conference. And then in the Eastern Conference, you pretty much have the Celtics and the Sixers and the Raptors. But I wonder, you know, whoever gets out of that side of the NBA, whether or not they have even a chance to steal a game in the final. So I would like to see some star stacking go the opposite way. But it seems like Kawhi would very much like to go there. Now, the question is whether or not the Lakers wait until mm-hmm. next offseason when he's a free agent and then they don't have to trade pieces to get him, or if they get so antsy that they're willing to offload, say, a Brandon Ingram and or Alonzo Ball in order to get him now. How patient and effort are the Lakers generally? Generally not very, and neither mm-hmm. is LeBron. We've seen that, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he traded away or had his teams in Cleveland trade away a lot of assets. I mean, don't forget that part of the reason why they were ab- the Lakers were able to sign him this offseason is because the Cleveland Cavaliers were willing to take Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance and trade a first-round pick in order to do that. So they basically, the Cavaliers basically helped the Lakers take LeBron from them this offseason. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not LeBron and the Lakers can sort of pump the brakes a little bit and take it slow. Mm. And that rivalry, especially in the Western Conference, is going to be fascinating to see if it does actually materialize between themselves and Golden State. You mentioned DeMarcus Cousins, Boogie Cousins, heading towards... Uh, the Warriors for next season, who could have a starting five, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, and DeMarcus Cousins. I'm not sure we've seen a starting five trip off the tongue like that <laughs> since uh, the days of the Bulls in the, in the early to mid-90s. I mean, that's just incredible. Freakish, almost unfair, some might say, John. Not almost, very much unfair. And <laughs> five all-stars in your starting lineup. But uh, last year, right before, this past year, right before the finals started, Steve Curry said that, you know, they had their four main guys and, with the fifth guy at center, it all depended on who was healthy and personnel matchups and who was available. And what he was really saying was it didn't matter who was starting at that five. And now it really doesn't matter who else they, they uh, fill in the rest of the roster with. Boogie Cousins can basically spend the entire year coming, uh, getting healthy off that Achilles. It's generally not good to be a guy that size and have an Achilles, so it's going to be interesting to see how healthy he'll, he'll be, how he recovers, whether or not he can regain his form. But if he does, that makes the Warriors better than they already were, and if he doesn't, they're fine anyway. So this is a no-lose situation for the Warriors, and it's very much a lose situation for the rest of the league. The hope would be for him, from a, from a personal standpoint, because uh, an Achilles injury, an injury layoff of that length, you, you know, players of any sport get naturally impatient they want to get back quicker than they probably should do they want to rehab as fast as they possibly can especially when you want to get back into a side of the caliber of the golden state warriors and where they find themselves at this particular moment in time you'd hope he has the right people around him to just kind of go listen uh, take it easy you imagine steve kerr is probably at the top of that list saying just take your time we're okay until you know such and such a point in the season, and when we need you, we need you. When you're available, you're available. Just hold your horses. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, if any organization is, is suited to do that, it's the Warriors. He's in a spot now where we're really going to find out. I mean, there's always been these sort of temperament questions about Boogie Cousins. Mm. So if we're in a spot now where we're very much going to find out if it's nature or nurture, if it's environment or if it's Boogie, because if he can't get along and work within the confines of that organization where uh, it's, by all accounts, pretty much the, the best place to work in the NBA for all sorts of reasons, not the least of which is that San Francisco is a wonderful city to live in. They're moving into a new building. They've got all these championships. They've got a fantastic culture. They've got one of the best coaches and smartest coaches and, and easiest people to get along with in Steve Kerr. So I think, yeah, I think they'd say to him, hey, uh, welcome take a load off, get get better, and, and we'll see you in the playoffs. Are there many other big trades we're kind of expecting in the offseason? I think we're waiting on, obviously, Kawhi Leonard, and then now there's news about uh, Jimmy Butler uh, not getting along at all with Carl Anthony Towns. Previously, he wasn't very well suited to play alongside okay. Andrew Wiggins. Uh, so there's, there's this story percolating in Minnesota right now that Jimmy Butler, who will be a free agent next offseason, might want out. Of Minnesota, which would be interesting. If he's a guy who's on the market sooner rather than later, that could shift some dynamics as well. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine from your standpoint, anybody heading east is probably a good thing from this point onwards. Philadelphia has money and it's a very underrated city. I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, you're much like Arsenal, sitting on a lot of money and not willing to, to spend it in the right <laughs> ways. It's, uh, it's a story we've heard all too often, John. Yes, I would, I would like that story to change. Let's change it. <laughs> so would Arsenal fans. So would Arsenal fans. Uh, John Gonzalez at The Ringer, thanks so much for taking time out to speak to us today. Always love to come on. Thanks for having me. Thanks, John.